Welcome back my friends. Today I'm showing you how to create this magnificent chart from the Pew Research Center with ggplot. It's a very clean chart that visualizes their survey findings quite nicely. So without further ado, let's start coding. We begin by setting up our project properly. While this may sound boring, this will actually save us some time later on. First, I will set my directory to the one I'm currently working in. This is something I have to do, but you can skip this step if you're fine with having your output files wherever. Second, I will load the tidyverse. And third, since we are working with a load of text customizations like making stuff bold inside of the subtitle, I will need ggtext as well. Then I want to set up my camcorder. This means that all my plots will be immediately exported to a PNG file of a specified size. For me, that is crucial because then I don't have to figure out how to change my text sizes when I export my plot later on. Otherwise, using ggsave may turn a nice chart into a colorful mess. And the first thing we need to specify is an output directory for the exported image. Then we need to fix the width and the height of our image. We will figure out good dimensions in a second. Also, let us specify the dimensions in pixels. And finally, we want the background of our image to be white. If we don't specify this in the camcorder, we will have a transparent background by default, which is not something we want. Okay, so let's figure out the width and height of our output images. I have measured out the original image in pixels using my screenshotting tool, and then I converted the pixels to centimeters because I realized that pixels may not be the best unit for our images. So I will just multiply my pixels with this weird number, which apparently does the conversion from pixels to centimeters. Nice, we have set up the camcorder and all outputs will now be exported as a PNG and displayed in the viewer and not in the plots window. Next, let us grab the data. Since the data is not available for download yet, I did a really pro thing and typed out the numbers from the image into a CSV file. Now I can just import this with read CSV and the file name. But this file has column names that are a bit annoying for programming. So I will throw this into clean names from the janitor package. Then I will sort everything by US adults and men to put this into the correct order for the charts later on. Next, we need to wrangle our data a little bit more. Hang in there, we're almost done with the data prep, then we can start building a nice GG plot. First, let us insert line breaks into the text that are in the task column. Here, I've used the length of 30 characters as a means to wrap the text. And because we want a chart that uses the order that is displayed in this table, I need to convert the task column to a factor variable. Then the ordering is preserved like we see it here. Now let's call this data set raw data. We will need it later on, but right now the data is not in a nice format for ggplot. So let's rearrange this with the pivot longer function, which means that we're going to create a data set, which we call rearrange data, which contains only data that we need. And then we're going to rearrange the columns women and men so that the column names will move into a column called group and the values go to a column name percentage. This is a data set ggplot can work with. So let's pass it to ggplot and on the x axis we'll have the percentages, on the y axis we'll have the task and on the color aesthetic we will use the group column and then we're creating a point layer. This gives us our first basic plot and notice that the labels on the y-axis have line breaks so that they are split into multiple lines, which is nice. Otherwise, we'd have a very thin area where we can actually plot the points. Now, let us do a couple of very basic changes like removing extra labels. If we look at the complete picture, we can see that there are no x-axis labels. Instead, all of the points are labeled directly. So we're going to use the labs function to set the x-axis labels to element blank and we do the same thing for the y-axis. And then we want to set title, subtitle and caption. Basically, these are just the title, subtitle and caption from our image. I'm just going to put these into the labs function using variables that I declare by writing out the text outside the ggplot because I like to save these things into separate variables so that my labs function stays short. Okay, so we have thrown in all of this stuff and right now this is a mess. We will fix this in a second. For now, notice that I have included a couple of things in the text like an asterisk which will give me an italic font later and a double asterisk which will give me a bold font as soon as we enable markdown in the subtitle. With that in mind, let's apply all of the theme changes that we want. First, we want to get rid of the legend. 
then we're going to move all of the stuff in the plot title to the left. Now we can actually read all of the things. We will also move the caption and format it a little bit to change its style and move it to the left. Notice that we needed to use caption position here, otherwise the caption will not be aligned to the whole image but to the panel. You know what, let's just do this in a little bit more detail. So this is the regular output that we would get. And the first thing I want to do is to make the color less black. Then we'll change the size a little bit and we will left align everything with H just. And then we're also going to add a little bit of margin below the plot caption where we will put the Pew Research Center title later on. You see in the original we have the name of the Pew Research Center below the caption and that is why we need a little bit of margin below it. Then we'll do the same thing with the plot title. So we're going to use element text to make the text bold and larger. And we're also going to add a little bit of margin on top and below it. Here the margin on top is needed so that we can add this horizontal line that the original image has. Okay, now comes the subtitle. This is where we're going to do things a little bit differently because we're going to use element markdown from the GG text package. And without any other changes than that, this will immediately enable the markdown notation that we included in our subtitle text where we added these asterisks for italic font and double asterisks to make the text bold. Actually, we don't even need the backslash n anymore. This will not change anything because we're in markdown notation now and line breaks are done with this br stuff. In any case, let's increase the font size, change the color to gray 40 and increase the line height a bit so that there is room between the first and the second line. Then we are also going to remove the margin below the subtitle so that we have a little bit more room for the actual data visualization. Notice that the text label on the y-axis are kind of small and I want them to be easily legible and that is why I make them bold. That's a bit better I think. And then notice that the original image doesn't use solid grid lines but dotted grid lines. We can do that by changing panel grid major and setting the line type to 3 and its color to black. I know that these were a lot of changes but we can see that we're already getting closer to the final image. Now this reminds me I completely forgot to apply the minimal before I even started working on the rest of the theme. So let's change this to get rid of this gray background. So we're going to throw the minimal in between this and set the base size to something nicer so that the text become a little bit larger. And we're also going to change the base family to Source Suns Pro, which I think is default on my system anyway, so that's why the font didn't change here. Okay, so we still have an x-axis here and we don't need that. We're going to label all data points directly, remember? So let's add scale x continuous and in there we're going to set the breaks to null. Perfect, we got rid of the x-axis now. Now before we move on, let me jump in real quick to remind you to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. This video is actually a ton of work and I'd appreciate your feedback. Okay, coming back to the video, let us change the colors next. Right now we still use the default colors and in the original the colors are kind of nicer. So let's make this change as well. And the way to do that is to assign a color palette vector in which we will use the named arguments in this vector to save a couple of hex codes. So in this vector you can see that the women use this bluish color and men use this yellowish color. Well, maybe it's more of a brown than a yellow. It's very hard to pinpoint what this exact color is. In any case, we have this saved in a vector now and therefore we can use this variable and throw this into scale color menu where we set the values to this vector. And since we named the arguments before, we can be sure that the correct colors are used for men and women. Okay, so this is already looking pretty decent. I got nice colors in there and I got all my titles. Time to add the labels. The first thing we want to do is to add the color labels so that we know which color corresponds to man or woman. And we do this by adding an annotation, which of course will be a text annotation. In there we're going to fix the coordinates of where the labels are supposed to be and we're also going to fix the size. Then we are setting the labels by using the names from our color palette vector which is women and men. Note that we have converted the names to title case so that they are spelled with a capital letter here. And then we're going to apply the colors from our colors vector and we're going to set the font face to bold. Excellent, now we have our labels in the plot, but have a look. One label is cut off a little bit because it goes outside of the plotting area. Let's fix this. This fix will also be a crucial ingredient for all the other annotations we want to add because for example the Pew Research Center label is also outside of the plotting area. 
So we need to figure out how to put stuff there without being cut off. And here the trick is to use chord Cartesian to set clip to off. And the moment I do that, nothing gets clipped if it goes outside of the plotting area. And while we're working with chord Cartesian, let us also change the limits of the X and Y axis. So we're going to set the Y limits to give us a little bit of room on top. And we're going to set the X limits so that the X axis goes from 0 to 95, which will give us some room on the right. We can use this room to add this gray part from the original visualization later. For now though, let us focus on adding the other labels. Since we've just turned off clipping, we can add the Pure Research Center label. By using these coordinates like this, the label will be way outside of the panel. And then we can set the Pure Research Center label. You really have to tweak these numbers until you're satisfied with the result. For example, if I put this to 90, then all of those will move around a bit. What I like to do is to fix the text to be left aligned with H just, and then once I've done that, then I will play around with the coordinates until I'm satisfied with the result. And it's also wise to do this kind of coordinate tweaking once you are basically finished with the image. Otherwise, things may move and then you will have to do all the coordinates. In this video, I could just do it now because I already know the numbers from my visualization. You know, because I came prepared. Now, by the same logic as before, let me add a label that tells you all that I have only created this ggplot remake and not actually designed the visualization. Since I'm not associated with the Pew Research Center, I don't want to suggest that I had something to do with the design. Now, coming back to the actual number labels, we have everything we need inside of our raw data set because these are already the coordinates for where we need to place the labels. Actually, the numbers themselves are the coordinates and the labels. So we can add a GM text layer and use our raw data as the data for this layer. And then we can set the aesthetics using the column names. In this case, one of the column names is women and this will be where we want to place the labels for the women. On the y-axis we will have the task column and the label will be the number that is inside of the women column. And then we fix the color and the size as well. But if we do that, then notice that the text labels are directly on top of the points now. And we don't really want that. So let's just put h just to 1 to make this right aligned. And we can make this even larger than 1 by say 0.4 to move the labels even farther. Now you may notice a couple of things that are not really great about this. First, we cannot read the labels very well because the points from the grid lines are behind them. So let's change the GM text to GM rich text. This will put the text into a box, but we kind of want the box but not its border. So let's get rid of this by setting the label color to NA. That way we have a nice legible label with white color behind it. But notice for the second entry in our chart, the woman label actually moved to the wrong direction. It needed to go to the right, but we moved it to the left. The reason for that is that the value for woman is larger than the value for man in this specific question. This is a bit annoying and we have to fix this by hard coding the way it is supposed to move. The easiest way to do that is to create a new data set that has a new column in it that creates the correct age just values. Okay, so let's do that. But before we do it, let us put our number that we have specified here into a variable so that we can replace the padding later on if we must. Then we can create a new data set based on the raw data set. In there, we create a new column where the age just value for the woman is either 1 plus our buffer if man is larger than woman. Otherwise, the age just value is 0 minus the padding. And then we do the exact same thing for the man such that we have a new data set that has the correct age just values. And therefore we can replace our raw data with this gender labels data set and we can replace age just with age just women. And this moves the labels perfectly. Finally, we need to do the same thing for the man. So copy the GM text layer and replace the word women with man a couple of times and then executing this code will put all of the labels into our chart. Nice, that was actually the hardest part to figure out and now we're almost done. Let's finish this by adding this gray area. We can do this by simply throwing in a couple of annotations. The first annotation throws a gray rectangle and the second annotation will throw in the text labels. So let's add a rectangular annotation where we have to specify the coordinates of the rectangles for corner and we do this via x-min, x-max, y-min and y-max. 
Once again, you have to play a little bit around with the coordinates to find the ones that work. And after specifying a fill color, we have our rectangle. So the last step is to add the labels via another text annotation. In this case, all text will use the same X coordinates because the labels will be above each other. And then we need to specify the Y coordinates. The US adults label will get the Y coordinate 9.5 and the other coordinates I have extracted from the raw data. And you may wonder what's going on here. Because our task column in raw data was in fact not a vector with numbers, but one with text in it. And the sneaky trick I used here was to notice that task is a factor column because it says right here 9 levels. And behind the scenes, factors are encoded as integers. So if I put this stuff into a vector with a number, then the result will be a number vector. Again, this is a kind of sneaky trick that uses that R converts the factors to integers here. And once we have the coordinates, then we need the actual labels. Also, let us change the line height to make the US adults label a little bit more compact. And we're also going to set the size. Finally, since we want the US adults label to be bold, we have to fix the font face and we create a vector with the first entry that corresponds to the US adults label as bold and the other parts are supposed to be plain. So we're going to create this vector by repeating the word plain as much as we need. And here we get this number of how often we need to repeat the word from the length of the US adults column from the raw data set. Nice, our chart is looking very good now, we are almost done. There's just one tiny thing that is missing here. And that are the horizontal lines at the top and at the bottom of the chart. And we can throw them in via segment annotation. So we throw in the first segment annotation, which will give us one of the lines depending on how we choose the coordinates. Again, it's playing around with the coordinates until the line is in the correct place. And then we add the second annotation in the exact same way. And now we're finished. We have created the chart from the Pew Research Center and we did it all in ggplot. I like to think that we got very close to the original. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you want to learn more about ggplot, why not check out this video next? It shows you how to highlight specific parts of your ggplot. Or maybe if you want to learn how to change your ggplot colors in general, maybe this video is more to your liking. In any case, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.